Hello everyone and welcome again to another short span of lecture and our lecture today is titled Ashman phenomenon which of course is a famous term that is known to many of us so let's explain today what is Ashman phenomena and today we are going to learn how to diagnose it in ECG and to know what is its clinical significance in the ECG so what can we see in this ECG example we can see here that there is an irregularly irregular rhythm with absence of persistent P wave. So it is suggestive of atrial fibrillation and of course it shows rapid ventricular rate or sometimes it's called rapid AF but the better term to say atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular rate. And we can see here that there is some waves in V1. These are not flutter waves. They are coarse fibrillatory waves as we see in V1 it is very common to see this pattern representing like some mated atrial activity. So this is not so to appearance, so please don't misdiagnose this ECG as it's a flutter. It is not it's a flutter, it is AF. But we can see here that there is something abnormal. There is a peat here showing a different morphology from the other peats. It shows right bond branch block apparency in V1 as it shows RSR dash pattern. So this peat show right bond branch block apparency. This is what we call Ashman phenomena. So let's explain it. First of all, why this pattern appeared in AF per se? The problem is that when there is an abrupt change in heart rate going from slower to faster heart rate due to the chaotic atrial rhythm, this leads to a problem related to the refractiveness of the Hesperkinji system. And why again? Because the refractiveness of the Hesperkinji system doesn't adapt immediately. So one of the complex that is conducted anti-gradely may be conducted in the relative refractory periods of the Hesperkinji system which gets longer due to the irregular heart rate. So let's ask ourselves, is it rate-dependent aberration? No, it is not rate-dependent aberration. Although sometimes SVT with relatively higher rate like 180 or 190 may show apparency of course. But the problem here is not in the very high heart rate as some shorter RR interval in the same ECG may no show normal conduction. So the problem is that when there is a long cycle is preceding the short cycle. This leads to the problem in the Hesperkinji system apparently. And so check the RR interval. If it is preceded by long short RR interval, it is Ashman phenomena. But if the apparition occurs with short RR interval only without preceding longer cycle, it is rate dependent. So let's explain this fact to understand why the long short cycle leads to this apparent peak as we can see here. The problem is that the refractoriness of the Hesperkinji system is directly proportional to the RR interval of the preceding peat. So when two peats are separated by a relatively long RR interval, as in this example, the refractory period of the second peat would be relatively longer. Then the problem appears here. When there is a premature supraventricular peat, as we can see in this dashed violet arrow, this Peat follows a relatively longer RR interval while the Hesperkinji system is still in the relative refractory period. So the conducted peat would appear abnormal, showing apparent conduction as we can see here. So the problem is not just in a very high heart rate. No, in the Ashman phenomena, the problem is long cycle followed by a short cycle leading to this apparent peat. So Ashman phenomena occurs when there is a relatively long RR interval followed by a relatively short RR interval, so it would be terminated by an apparent QRS complex as we can see here. So now we understand why apparency occur. The next question, why it is right bundle branch block apparency per se? Why it is not left bundle branch, left bundle branch block, for example? Of course, we remember a fact that we mentioned in the lecture of ectopics in ECG. So the right bond branch block normally has a longer absolute refractory period and also relative refractory period than the left bundle. So with very early PEC, the right bond branch block would have longer time to recover from refractoriness than the left bond branch leading to right bond branch block apparency. And this explains why the apparent PEC commonly show right bond branch block apparency rather than left bond branch block apparency. Of course, we should note an important fact that the right bond branch block in Ashman phenomena shows typical right bond branch block morphology as it shows RSR dash pattern. Because here, the conduction proceeds normally through the Hesperkinji system, but because the right bundle is plugged, the left bundle would conduct normally and then the impulse would go from the LV to the RV, leading to the typical right bond branch block morphology. So it is not the same as BVC of left ventricular origin, which would show atypical morphology for right bundle like for example rapid ear sign which we discussed in the lecture of white complex tachycardia 
So this is regarding right bond branch block apparency in Ashman phenomena. So there is something called the FISH criteria that summarize the criteria of Ashman phenomena. Number one, it shows relatively long cycle immediately preceding the cycle, which is shorter and terminated by the apparent QRS complex. So it is short, long, short interval is even more likely to initiate apparency. A short cycle followed by a long cycle and then the short cycle in the third, which would be terminated by the apparent complex. Number two, it shows right bundle apparency with normal orientation of the axis. So the axis is not a problem, but the complex morphology is variable. So, of course, it is typical morphology, not of ventricular origin. We, number three, we see a regular coupling of the apparent QRS complex. They appear irregularly and they can be more than one in the same ECG strip. And number four, there is lack of fully compensatory pose because it is not a PVC. It is just apparent conduction. So the apparent peat would not be followed by a compensatory pose as we can see in ectopics. So what is the clinical significance of Ashman phenomena? Ashman phenomena is usually asymptomatic and doesn't require any specific treatment. And symptoms are only present if it is related to the premature peat as a patient may feel palpitation or irregularity in his heart peats. And it is not related to whether the complex are conducted apparently. So Ashman phenomena itself doesn't cause any symptom and doesn't cause clinical significance to our knowledge. And so just as a problem with Ashman phenomena to differentiate it from PVC. Because a supraventricular impulse with apparent conduction may be confused with a PVC. And the, there is no problem if it appears once, but the problem if they are repeated and there is a series of consecutive apparently conducted beats. The problem that you need to differentiate this from ventricular tachycardia, which would be non-sustained VT in this, or would be misdiagnosed as non-sustained VT, or you may misdiagnose this as intermittent pre-excitation, as you may think that the apparent peat is due to anti-grade conduction over an assumed accessory pathway. It is not intermittent pre-excitation and it is not non-sustained VT. It is just apparent conduction caused by the Ashman phenomena due to the facts that we explained shortly. Of course, we have other names for Ashman phenomena like Ashman apparency or Ashman peat, so they are the same. So don't be confused if you hear this name. So, of course, we need now to revise another ECG example here. As we can see, that there is a patient show AF with nearly controlled ventricular rate. So the heart rate is not very rapid, or it may be, for example, at the high normal, like 100 beat per minute. And the problem in this beat, which shows right bond branch block apparency because of the fact that there was a preceding longer RR interval than a shorter RR interval, which was terminated by this apparent peat showing right bond branch block apparency. So now we understand how to diagnose asthma phenomena in ECG and what is its clinical significance, which is just the problem with the differential diagnosis, but itself it is not clinically significant. And remember, Ashman phenomena is considered like a normal variance that sometimes appear in AF due to long short cycles, but with no specific agent needed. And just don't confuse it with PVCs or intermittent pre-excitation. Thank you very much for your listening.